Hmm, got a tragic here, and welcome back to Lord of the Rings. Okay, so it's been a while. I've done a bit of work on this mod, so it looks a bit different. It's now got solo and two-handed support, so we're just gonna we're still gonna play two-handed though. And I've also almost finished the Daredevil cycle, but we have one more of the Mirkwood cycle to do: the massing at Osgiliath. Now remember, we are using uh, decks that are limited to the Merkle Cycle cards. And this quest is quite hard with just the Merkle Cycle cards. In fact, this quest is actually got strange scaling issues because it's got such a difficult opening couple of turns that even with larger card pools, if you add more players, it's still pretty hard. Like, the more you... Talking about, I haven't actually got my decks. I forgot to load my decks before we came. Uh, yeah, so like it has a very, very difficult start, which means even with a much larger card pool, it can be quite challenging these opening turns, which may, makes this deck, this quest very interesting. Not only is it fantastically interesting and thematic, it also has. <laughs> You know, it's also got longevity. You can play this well into the life of the game because, you know, it doesn't matter how good your card pool is. You're still kind of got a bit of a challenge on your hands. So it's like one of those quests where, like, if you're if you're looking for a quest that has longevity that you can just go, well, this quest, I can play this quest for years. Massing is one of those quests. It's very, very good in my opinion. I might just save it like this, just so I have a setup, just in case I fail, which is quite possible. <laughs> okay, so as always, you've got to pick your first player first before you draw your starting hands. Now, the reason why I make this player the first player all the time uh, is that I have a single leadership hero here, right? And let me just go to that. He, we have Steward of Gondor in this deck, and if you have him as player two, he gets a turn two steward is a possibility. If you make him the first player, you can't get Steward out until turn three, and Steward is such a powerful card. Let's have a look at our hand. Okay, so this hand is a mixed bag. It's got a couple of really good things. For starters, it's got a one drop, it's got a shadow response, and it's got an unexpected courage. So it actually has some pretty damn good stuff ready to go. The problem is it's got quite a high character count. Now this particular quest has some very nasty treachery effects that make you discard all your characters and then later on if you can't discard characters it increases the power of attacks now instead of filling my deck with ways to counter treachery cards because it doesn't really help because most of the treachery cards also have doomed or surge or whatever so if you say use eleanor you'd end up drawing three cards instead of one card or something like that because the surge would still trigger and the next card would have to come out. It could have doomed or surge. So even card and, and there's so many treacheries that it's almost like a waste of slots to have test of will because the chances of having it in your hand in the very opening stages of the game, the very first turn, which is when it's the most dangerous, is pretty low. So I think I just ignore them and just take them on the chin. But if this hit, hits us now, we'd lose two really good cards and, well, three really good cards would get got. Now, these decks are low character counts, so I'm tempted to mulligan this, but the fact that it's got a shadow cancel and it's got unexpected courage in the opening hand is a huge boon to me. I'm just going to check out the other hand and see what we've got going on here. Okay, so this is also good. We have a two drop. We've got card draw. We've got card draw. We've got Sentinel, which combos with uh, Unexpected Courage. So this is actually a very good hand. 
So we're actually going to keep both of these hands now that I realize that I've got sig uh, signal. Now we do have uh, stand and fight to retain, to get our characters back, so it's not too much of a risk. Okay, let's uh, check out the quest now. Beyond expectations, there are reports of increased orc activity around Ithlilion, and you have been sent to investigate. You enter Osgiliath and cross the river. On the outskirts of the city, you see a horde that surpasses all expectations coming down the Morgul Road. Blah, 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 set up instructions. Now, you can automate that. There's just a player button here. You just click it the amount of times, one, two, and that uh, brings out a two-player setup. And that's one of the interesting things about this quest is that there's no randomization in the setup. So it really allows you to have quite interesting deck building because you know exactly what you have to deal with. Let's uh, keep going on this quest. As the van of the army enters the city, some of the horde's outriders are aware of your presence and head in your direction. Drawing back, you make a hasty retreat towards the river. Players cannot travel to West Bank locations. So those of you who know your Lord of the Rings geography will know that uh, Osgiliath is separated from Miras Tirith by the Anduin River. So it goes like Miras Tirith, you know, the White City. Then there's Palanior Fields, you know, like in Lord of the Rings movie when he runs Gandalf running down that big field where they have the big army. So the run, so on the and at the base of Plenty of Fields is the Anduin River, and then on the other side of the Anduin River is Osgiliath. So we've come down, we've crossed the river, we're in Osgiliath, and we see the Morgul Road, which is this big road heading off to Mordor, and there's a massive army coming for us, and these guys here are the scouts of that army, like the initial scouts, okay? And these guys see us and charge towards us to try and kill us so we can't warn us. And our job is to hightail it out of there and get out of Dodge. Now, the quest is quite thematic because, like you see here, you can't travel to West Bank locations. And the, what that means is we're actually on the east bank of the river. And like that journey down the Anduin quest where there's a, a quest card where you are literally in the raft on the river, there's a quest card where we are literally wading through the river and then eventually we get to the West Bank and we can't travel to East Bank locations. And our job is to escape and we just keep getting harassed and chased all the way back to the city. And even the Witch King comes out. It's a really thematic quest. I love this quest. But it's difficult. I mean, look, we're already at eight threat and we have all these monsters to deal with. And there's three monsters, one of every scout for each player you add. And that's why the opening turns are extremely difficult. Like if you're playing a four player game, you have, what, 16 threat plus all this incoming damage you've got to deal with. So you need very specific setups. And it becomes a lot easier once the card pool opens up. You know, you have like heroes with like four defense and all this kind of stuff. Or, you know, you have like Thor and company decks that produce shocking amounts of willpower. Uh, but it's still challenging, even, even with better card pools. But all these all these scouts, and we'll be seeing these a lot because the deck is a very thin encounter deck, so it gets cycled. Uh, we've got scouts. These guys always attack the first the, the player with the lowest threat. Okay, so whoever has the lowest threat gets attacked, and it even has a clause. So if it's the first player on a tie, so normally in this game when there's ties, you can choose. No such luck. So these guys always attack the lowest threat. These guys, every time they kill a monster, they go back in the deck. It's like a theme with the wargs in the Lord of the Rings card game is that they recur somehow, like they go back to the staging area or they shuffle into the deck or whatever. And then there's these guys who all their damage that they assign gets added as threat gain, which is horrible. But the good thing about this quest is that it's not out of control with the threat. As long as we stay under 35 threat in the opening turns, we're going to be in a good situation because the next monster is 40 and the next monster after that is 45. So there's quite a lot of leeway. And once we hit 35 threat, we have another sort of period of leeway where we can be a little more reckless because you don't have to worry about threat until we hit 40. Anyway. So that's basically the setup. Let's uh, get into this sucker, draw a card. 
Oh, look at that. We now have our test of will. It's a pretty excellent start. So now that I've got a test of will and I've got a hasty stroke, do I want to... See, the cool thing is I have unexpected courage. I can cast unexpected courage over here, place it on Denethor, and then put signal on Denethor, and then Denethor can block with his three defense multiple people on different sides of the table. And I was planning to do that, but now that I've got a test of will as well, I just think I'm just going to have to wait for turn two drop to do this. So all I'm going to do is spend one resource and put out this guy here, and we're going to do a quest like so. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, we are going to do a quest, and I am going to just, uh, I'm going to spend one and do this action so each player can draw a card. Okay, didn't help. Okay. The reason I did that is because I really would prefer to have a character on this side of the table that I could do as a one drop. So I was hoping to draw a dwarf or something that I could stick there. Anyway, this only gives us plus two threat. So now it's uh, your blammo. Your blammo. Okay, so this is, if the players have not crossed the Anduin, it gets plus three. We have not crossed the Anduin. So this is actually one, two, three, permanent will. And this guy says, add the top scout enemy from the discard pile. But luckily there is no one in the discard pile, so that's fine. But we are plus five, which is a pretty hefty start. So let me just do this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That is going to put us pretty close to 35, which is not where we want to be. So let's have a look at our discard options. If only I'd played, uh, if only I'd played this guy, I could have, I could have, uh, gotten rid of that. Okay. So I think I'm going to discard. I'm going to discard this guy. And I'm going to discard this guy. That gives us two will. And that is because Eleanor's ability can be used by both characters to add will. Okay, so we're plus three. So that is minus two, one, two one, two. And then at the action phase at the end of this thing, I'm going to spend this is risky. If I do this, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to risk it. I'm going to go one. No, I'm not going to risk it. What I was thinking is I could do standard fight, bring this guy back to the table, table and then discard him. And that would clear this uh, four threat from the staging area. Yeah, yeah I am going to do it. So I'm going to go one, two, stand and fight. Bring this guy out of the discard pile. I'm then going to exhaust him and discard to place two progress tokens on any location. Put two progress on here. It only needs two progress. So that is a minus four. Bam. And you'll see we're actually plus one now. So that is a minus one, two, three. Ooh, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So basically, we didn't gain or lose any threat. I'll just quickly check that. 11... 27, yeah, 8, 19, 29. Okay, good. So uh, my maths is working out. <laughs> okay, now we just hope we don't have a horrible shadow card. Okay, attacking. 
These guys attack the person with the lowest threat, and there's, it doesn't matter how we do our optional engagements, we'll have one wolf here and one wolf here. So we get one, two, three. Oh, one thing I did forget is this guy is now going to untap because uh, we discarded this guy from play. And he has this ability that says, after a character leaves play, ready the prince. The prince is a hugely underrated character. People hate this guy. I think he is a boss. Okay, whatever. I'm going to leave this one undefended. And hopefully that's not going to end the game. Ooh. Removal defending characters, so that doesn't actually affect us. This guy is attacking for four, which is exactly what we want. One, two, three, four wounds, which gives him one, two, three, four, five, six attack. Bam. Because Gimli has this ability, he gets plus one attack for each damage token. Nice. Now this one is undefended. One damage and undefended, plus one damage. So these guys do one damage. So that's one, two, three damage total. So we're going to put one wound on you. We're going to put one and one in threat. Okay, just, I don't know why I made that so complicated. This guy's one attack is going on her. Uh, this guy's two attack is going here, one one as a wound and one as threat because Frodo can eat threat, eat damage as threat. Okay, bam and bam. This guy gets a card, he is going to defend. Come on, that's nothing, discard. It also gets rid of this horrible Plenty or Fields card. This card is a real problem late game because it's you're forced to travel to it, right? And by the end of the quest, it's all about running away to escape. So the, the seven point delay on the final quest card can be quite full on. Anyway, this guy's attacking for four. This guy's defending at three, so he gets one wound. Okay. Attacking. He's going to attack and kill this guy. And then this guy attacks for three, but he's aided by the range three. And that kills this guy. He only needs four to kill. This guy then gets discarded because he attacked. Oh, that's limit once per round, isn't it? Oh, wait, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so we're actually not going to do that. We're going to leave him out, leave him up, and leave him on the table. So we're not going to attack this guy. And then I'm just going to use this. Exhaust one hero you control to choose and ready a different hero. Boom. That exhausts him. We ready Berevor, who we then tap and... I'm going to go one, two. Oh, look at that. Pretty useless opening hand here. Okay, and that is the first turn. That was a very nice opening turn. Okay. So we are going to go. Let me just quickly check over here. Nice. Okay, we've got a very good opening hand here. I'm going to go... We ended up using those resources, so I'm going to leave them up again. So we have Stroke and Will. And I'm going to leave it up again so I have Quick Strike. Actually, it might be a better for me to actually make sure I get my characters out. Oh, no, I don't have to worry about it because I've got Test of Will. Yeah, so we're going to do it like this. Let's go Quest and Quest. Meanwhile, over here... I'm going to go one, two, three, place out a healer, and we're going to quest like so. Plus three now. Blammo. Blammo. We have excellent draws, and zero quest points is perfect. We really want to slow down this opening stage. Okay. 
This guy again attacks whoever has the lowest threat. And I'm going to optionally engage this bloke. So he gets a card and we get four cards here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to defend, flip. Oh, look at that, deal two damage to defending character. That will kill him. So I have to spend one and hasty stroke that out. He gets one wound because he's attacking for four, defending at three. I then heal those wounds with uh, my healer. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, we now lo no longer have uh, that protection. I am going to spend one and do hasty stroke, a quick stroke, big pun. I always say hasty stroke. Exhaust the character, declare as attacker. So that's your blam. Attacking for six. This guy only needs five to kill, so he is destroyed. Yep. The reason I checked is. Uh, <laughs> we really don't want... There's a card in the encounter deck we're trying to dig up. And now I need to think about what I'm going to be doing here. We have not got any of our threat reduction. I'm going to leave this undefended. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Deal two shadow attack, uh, deal two shadow damage to the attacking enemy. The defending player may exhaust a character controls to gain control. So I'm going to exhaust him. This guy I've gained control. He is then discarded. I'm going to leave this one undefended. If the player has not crossed the Anduin, return any current active location to the staging area, and this becomes the active location. This is a terrible forced effect. Character committed to the quest, deal one damage. And it's only while it's the active location, but it is now the active location. He does one damage. We're going to place one damage onto uh, Eowyn. She now has two damage on her. And we're going to leave this one undefended as well. Plus two attack if it's undefended. So he's now attacking with three. That's one, two, three. And then I'm going to attack for two and kill this guy. Okay, so that was a pretty, pretty, we had a pretty okay opening start so far. I feel like we can, if we can keep this going, we'll be all right. Okay, I'm going to spend one and put out another one of these guys. This time I do have enough spirit resources, so I'm going to go one, two, and place out this here. Uh, yeah. And we're going to go quest, quest. But before we do those questing, I'm actually going to tap him and clear these two wounds. I'm going to we'll just see how we're going to do with the questing. Over here, I'm going to go one, two, three, place out this. I'm also going to go one and place out the signal. And I'm going to go quest, quest. So if we quest like that, we are plus one. We need to get three points. We have to clear this location as quickly as possible. So I am going to quest with this bloke. That's plus three. I'm also going to quest with uh, Frodo. Now, of course, everyone gets wounded who's questing. So he gets a wound. He gets a wound. He gets one wound as threat. This dude gets a wound, and this dude gets a wound. A healer's going to have her work cut out for him. Let's draw. 
Ooh, the first scout of the enemy revealed from the encounter deck each round gains Surge and Doom 2. So that's even a worse location. Whew, no, that's so good. It wasn't a scout. Okay, we're plus two. So that's one, two goes here. But we're also going to do a discard. I'm going to discard the other signal. Actually, I'm going to discard the Song of Travel. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to discard the other signal. That gives us one extra point of will. We're now three, so this is now cleared. And this is an East Bank, so we can quest there. It's a great card, so this is like... it. More more stuff comes out, and it's like a, a watchtower where they're, they're viewing everything. Five points to clear, so that's very, very nasty for us. Okay, this guy attacks whoever has the lowest threat. And we are going to optionally engage this bloke. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to defend twice. Oops. So, for starters, he gets a shadow card. He gets a shadow card, and he gets a shadow card. So, even though this guy is snared, he still gets a shadow card. It just doesn't actually attack. So, that's automatically discarded. And again, it is not a scout. We don't have to worry about our scouts, really, because we've already got our scouts. So, as long as he doesn't die, we're fine. And with three... Forest snares, we can basically get quite a lot of stuff going straight into the discard pile. Anyway, so I do a defend against this bloke. Remove all defending characters whose attack is considered undefended. That's annoying. So that's three damage. That's one, two, three threat. And then I defend again against this bloke. He's only one damage, yeah. And that's nothing. So he's attacks for one, no damage. Okay. So then I'm going to attack for six. And that's going to put one, two, three wounds on to this uh, captain. Okay. And I'm actually going to attack like this. That guy gets discarded, and we're going to kill this last scout. And because he's discarded, this guy will untap. And then I'm going to do the trick again, common cause. Boom, that exhausts him to unexhaust her. I then exhaust her and draw two cards on this side. Beautiful. We get standing fight. Nice. Okay, so everything's coming up roses right now. Don't worry, it can still go to the dogs. Something is wrong with this keyboard. This is a brand new keyboard, this clickety-clack keyboard. But sometimes it, uh, the button that I've got assigned in the mod to draw a card sometimes presses twice for some reason. It's not the mod, it's actually this keyboard. It's very frustrating. Okay, so we have another strike that's excellent okay so this is quite good uh, this guy goes first you know I didn't I shouldn't have actually engaged this guy I thought I'd be able to snare him this turn but I didn't realize I didn't have three resources for the start of this turn it's a bit of a bum scar so what I'm going to do is, what have we got in here? Ah, I do have Rhythmark's Finest. That thing's going to be really annoying. Doom 2.
Okay, so we're going to go quest, quest, quest. Quest, quest. That's plus seven. Bam, bam. I can't believe it. No scouts. This guy does have... Uh, Okay, so this guy's got Surge. So when revealed, the first player takes control and committed to the quest. And he gains Surge. Wow, no scouts came out. That is excellent. So that is five, six, seven. Beautiful. That is a West Bank. We can't travel to it. We can travel to this one, but I don't want to have... Characters getting wounded, so we're just going to leave it there. And this is a West Bank. We can't travel to it. Okay. So, what are we going to do now? I guess I'm going to have this guy optionally engage this. This guy gets a card that's sent straight to the discard pile. Nice. These guys get two cards. We defend twice with Sentinel. Uh, actually, I'm going to spend... He's going to defend once with Sentinel. And he's going to spend one and do a quick strike and kill this guy. So that is discarded. And this one's defended. It's got nothing. He's attacking for three, defending at three, no damage. Okay. So then I'm going to tap for heal. Let's heal this guy's wound. Actually, I think I'm going to heal this guy's wound. And then I'm going to tap him to scry the encounter deck for one. Each player discards and doom, so we're going to send that to the bottom. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have done that because we did have test of will. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. No, I am going to do that. Yeah, I am going to do that. Yeah, I am going to do that. So. Okay. As long as we don't get lots of monsters, we should be fine. And I think that is it. We are not going to attack with this guy. And bam. And draw. Could really do with some. Ooh, got our first ranger. So that's one, two, three, four. He's definitely coming out. And that's that. So let's just quest just with these two and this guy. Meanwhile, over here, I'm going to go one, two, three and snare this bloke. Now, very rare to have so many snares so early, but it's very good for us because this is actually the best card to snare as well because he brings other guys with him. So if you snare this guy, he's out of the game and this when reveal effect is out of the game. All the other ones are much easier to deal with. So out of all the cards to snare, this is the one you want to snare. Okay. And I think that's all we really need, right? Yeah, okay, so we're just going to quest just with him. It's plus four, which is probably a little too high, but we're stuck with it. Bam. Surge. Each card coming off the encounter deck now has doomed. So that's Surge. And that's Doom, Doom. And then the next card is a Scout. Excellent. And that also has Doom, Doom. This guy here is a Ruin, so he has plus three threat. 
one, two, three. So we're actually negative one. Oh, and also we did have a tracker this time. So he gets a card, he gets a card, and he gets a whatever you call it, not cards, you know what I'm trying to say. We're negative one. I'm going to do a I'm going to discard this card. It gives us one. And I think I'm going to discard none of those cards. So that gives us plus one. So now we don't gain or lose any threat. But we're still 41. But this guy doesn't attack to 45, so we're fine. This guy attacks whoever has the lowest threat, which is this bloke here. And this guy, we're going to optionally engage down here. And this guy... Oh, we may as well travel to that location to get him out of the staging area. Okay, so he gets a card. This one is put straight into the discard pile. This one's put straight into the discard pile, and then he gets a card. He's going to defend twice. First against this guy, who is attacking for two. Wow, that was close. Okay, so this guy, he's attacking for two plus three three if we don't discard an ally. That will make his attack five, but he defends at three and has three health. So he, that's only going to put two wounds on him. So we're actually going to let that go through. He gets two wounds. We then tap our healer and heal those two wounds. And then he taps a second time to defend against this one. No damage. He attacks for two. Kills this one. I'm going to attack you and draw two cards. Two cards. <laughs> Still no uh, threat reduction. And I'm going to attack for six seven versus this guy that puts six wounds on him one two three four five six okay and let's keep going okay so that is one two three four we're going to put out this bloke I'm going to go one two and put out this bloke now the question is do i want to do i want to put out another card draw so i can draw four a turn or do i want to snare this guy he's only got two wounds left to kill him i do have a bunch of faints here i don't really care about this so i'm just going to do that Let's uh, quest with you, and quest with you, and you, and you. That puts us plus six, but it's going to be even better than that. This guy gets, this guy here only needs two to pass, so we'll put this one here and get rid of that. And this one also gets another one. So that actually gives us plus seven, which is a ridiculous amount. Is it time to start? heading off. I don't think it's quite time yet, so I think I'm going to untap that guy. We're now plus five. Let's draw two cards. Your blammo. Your blammo. That has each scout raises threat by one. So that's plus two, which clears this location. Perfect. Okay, so let's attack down here this guy gets a card which is automatically discarded by whatever this thing is forest snare he gets a card oh 
And there you go. With no more shadow cards because we have to reset the deck. Excellent. So it's pr now it's time to start heading off. So this guy's attacking for two. This guy's attacking for three. They're both blocked by this guy. So... This guy is going to attack for six, which kills this bloke. And this guy is going to attack for two, which puts one wound on this bloke. Okay, and then I'm going to go tap one, two. Beautiful, then I'm going to go tap, one. Okay, and I think we're ready to start powering out now. If I could just find my, uh, if I could just find my, my Steward of Gondor, I don't want to, I feel like I don't feel like going until I have Steward of Gondor. But I am going to go one, two, three, and greetings this guy. That reduces one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go one, two, place out this bloke. And I think we're ready. So that is quest, quest, quest. That gives us plus five. This dude needs three. It's got two, so that is gone. And he gets another one on here. This one actually needs seven to pass. Meanwhile, over here, I'm going to go one two, three, place out another healer, and then I'm going to go one, place out a Song of Wisdom. Now that I've got Song of Wisdom out, all my three drop lore cards, like this one, uh, every turn I can cast them. Okay, so I think we're right there, so let's uh, just do that for questing. That's six. Oh, deck is empty. Let's reset that sucker. Out come more scouts. One, two. Excellent. This is a West Bank. It's still fine. So we have one one monster. He's going to attack whoever has the lowest threat. We have even. So he goes over here. Because it's to whoever's the first player. So again, we have a card. A card that's discarded by the catcher. And another card. And the reason why we do it that is because you always deal to highest threat first. It doesn't usually make a difference, but if you want to be technical, it does. Okie dokie. So this guy is going to defend against this bloke. He has seven wounds. He has eight damage. This thing says... After he's declared as a defender, deal another damage. So we deal another damage to him to make eight before the shadow card is even resolved. So that's the end of him. And I'm going to defend against this bloke. Remove all defending characters. That's one damage. We're just going to put one damage like so. And then I attack for six and kill this guy. I now go heal. I heal that wound off you. I also go heal and heal that wound off you. And then I also go tap and scry the encounter deck. 
He's easy to deal with, so I'm going to return him to top. Oh, maybe I don't even need to. Yeah, I'm going to return him to top. Why not? Blam. And then I'm going to go bam, bam. And I'm going to draw one, two, three cards on this side. Oh, and finally get my stewards. <laughs> okay, and I may as well just go three attack, and that puts two wounds on him, just so I can deal with him at will. Basically, the way I do here is, like I said, it's best to have these snares on stuff like this. So if one of he, him, he, these cards come out, and if I have a dwarf in hand, I think I've even got one in the discard pile already. No, I don't. I have the Hammersmith Dwarf that returns attachments. So you can play the Dwarf, return this attachment, and then recast it on a better target. Okay, so that is all done. I think it's time for us to make our move, shall we? Oh, look, all three stewards in one turn. Lame. But I can't actually use it. Well, I guess I can, actually. I'll go one... Song of Kings, and then I'll go one, two, place this over here, then go tap, one, two. I'll go one, two, three. And that is, uh, yeah. Let me just, yeah, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six. I then go one, two, and I play Wandering Took to this side of the table. This thing says, reduce your threat by three, raise the other player by three. So that is one, two, three, one, two, three. We're back to being even, perfect. Okay. Now, so basically this thing comboing with uh, the greeting so this thing says drop a player by six or drop each by two. You can combo it with him for dropping each player by three, but now I've got the ability to manipulate my threat, which is really important because it allows you to make sure the scouts, you know, these guys go to who you want them to. Okay. We're going to quest and quest and quest. That puts token, oops, sorry, wrong token, that puts a token and a token, but plus five, I think I want to start moving this a bit faster, so I'm going to also quest with one, two, three, so that is another three on top of that, I'm going to quest with uh, this guy as well. Yeah, this guy as well. So we're plus six. You blammo. You blammo. Okay. Raise the total threat by one for each scout. This guy isn't a scout, so he gains surge. Fine. So we're plus three. So that is one, two, three. That takes us to six. I'm going to tap this bloke. So exhaust family to choose a player, get plus one for each questing character. We have one, two, three questers. That's three. And now plus six, which is over seven. We've completed your blam. And we're doing pretty well. The outriders and scouts of the army have cut you off from the bridge. You desperately seek the likeliest place to cross the Anduin. Players cannot travel to West Bank locations. We've got our tracker out, so who cares? Each player cannot play or put into play more than one card from his hand each round. This is incredibly important because this is now an effect. We've already played cards this round. So no feints. Nothing. We can't do anything now. We're not going to bother traveling. That's going to be cleared next turn. And... 
optional engage here, optionally engage here. This guy gets one card straight into the discard pile, then he gets another card here. This guy gets one card here, and then one card directly into the discard pile. Okay, so we're going to defend with Denethor. Flip. He's attacking for four, so he gets one wound. I'm not going to risk it. I've got two healers, so I'm going to tap him to heal that wound. Then I'm going to tap him to defend against this bloke. There you go. Lucky I did that. Or I could just discard an ally to cancel... Uh, I don't need to discard an ally. So he gets plus three. That makes him five attack. We have not crossed the Anduin. He's attacking for five, so that is another two wounds, which we just cancel with our other healer. Okay, so that is three, four, five. That kills him. Six... Seven, eight, which puts seven wounds on him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're blam. And then I'm going to tap you and tap you and draw three over here. One, two, three. And let's uh, flip over this. I've made a change to the how the how the blood drops work, but we just keep. Uh, I mean, a little bit of a problem here. What I might do is I'll just uh, lock these. So if I now, yeah, that's better. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got all our gas. It's time to bring this home. Let's tap you, one, two. Uh, I've got one, two. Oh, wait, actually. Let me think. I can only play one card this turn. So I'm not going to play anything from this side just so I have my feints and my test of wills in reserve. So quest, quest, quest. For starters, that gets rid of this location because it only needs two and we get another progress token here. And I'm going to go one, two, three. Place out another quester. We search for a song. There are no songs left in the deck. Interesting thing about this card is that the shuffle your deck is a separate effect on top of this on top of the uh, fetch. So you can cast her and choose to shuffle your deck. It's very handy for stacking cards like, uh, you know, Imradil or whatever. Anyway, so that's giving us a total quest power of plus eight. We need five to beat here. So I'm going to push this a little further. Let's quest with you as well. And you as well. That's plus 12. That's plenty. How is that plus 12 with just two extra cards? That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, oh, right, yeah, sorry. I was confusing myself. So we're questing for 13, and uh, there's only one in the staging area. 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. I forgot this guy was questing. Confusing myself. Whatever, we're definitely going to pass. So that's Blam, and your Blam. No scout, so he gains Surge. Every card has Doomed and Surge. Doom, Doom. Okay. Bam and bam. 
And this guy has plus three. One, two, three. Okay, so we're still plus eight, so that's no problem. This is cleared. The cold waters of the Andaman River rush before you, but the current is weaker here and you have to cross. The Outriders and the Van of the Dark Lord's army are closing fast behind and their archers will make the attempt at crossing even more dangerous. The bravest members of your band turn back to distract the oncoming horde. <laughs> so the rest of you might escape. Excellent. So we're actually in the middle of the river, crossing the river now, because we couldn't get to the bridge in time. The progress tokens from card effects or whatever cannot be placed. That means, you know, Legolas's ability or whatever. We cannot go to east or west bank locations. And here's the important thing. To commit characters to the quest, we have to discard a ranger or one of our heroes. But we actually have both our rangers out. So who cares? So we can't travel to any locations and we're pretty much ready. So once we clear this stage... This guy is coming out, but look, we've all we've got two of our feints already, plus a lot of support here, so I'm not too worried. So what I'm going to do is, firstly, this guy gets a shadow card. This one is automatically discarded, and this one is automatically discarded because of the two. Forest Snares. Forest Snare is so good. Like, I just can't stress how good it is. In fact, the ability to just send things to the discard pile through shadow effects is one of the most secret pro tips you can ever get in Lord of the Rings. If you have some kind of monster that's got low damage and you can deal with it, like say you've got Burning Brand on someone and he can defend it every turn, it is better to have that guy defending every turn and discarding from the encounter deck than killing that monster. You know, it's a really strong effect. So having three three of these things available to me in this particular game has made a huge difference. Anyway, we're going to defend with this bloke again. Again, he puts one point of damage. This guy has seven damage on him. He only needs eight. So he is also killed. Okay, then I'm going to tappity and tappity. I'm going to draw two cards on this side and one card on this side. Ah, and there is the Hammersmith. Okay, let's reset. Let's draw. Let's tap and draw twice. Remember, we can now cast multiple cards. So we're going to go one, two, and place out a blocker. I'm also going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and use Dwarven Tomb. To drop threat by six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then cast Wandering Took to this side. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, sorry, my phone rang. I kind of lost my train of thought. Yeah, so I did a bunch of threat reduction. And we're going to leave both the shadow effect and the test of will up. Okay, so I'm going to discard this guy so he can quest. And I'm going to go quest, quest, quest. Is that going to be enough questing power? That's four. We do have a tracker. So that is one. Oh, guys, wrong button. So that is one and one and another one. Only plus four. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go move both of these guys back over here. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to quest with both of those guys as well. 
that gives it plus six. And then with this guy's ability, that is another... If we can require it, that's another one, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That should be plenty. Okay, so we're plus six. Draw. Ooh, the nastiest of the nasty ones. This guy is actually out of play completely. We have not crossed the Anduin yet, so it's still only the first top scout. And the next guy. is the East Bank. Okay, so we're not going to travel there. And that's fine. We only need one point. So that's one point goes there. That is cleared. A quick interlude here. That location is actually plus three threat. But as you saw, I had another six questing power or something if I tapped Faramir to add plus one will to all the characters that were questing so even though there's a bit of a mistake here it, it doesn't actually affect anything if i was paying more attention final stage you made it across the anduin and are leaving osgiliath when a fell shriek splits the air you begin the race across the plenial fields to the safety of miras tirith but a new enemy follows behind okay Add the Witch King to the staging area. Players have now crossed the Anduin. Players cannot travel to East Bank locations. If we defeat the stage, we win. Woohoo! But unfortunately, if the players have crossed the Anduin, Palania Field gains. When faced with the option to travel, we have to travel or raise our threat. We're not going to raise our threat. We're going to travel. And we're going to travel to this one here. That's going to add another seven points to the 15 we have to race through. Okay, this guy also gets added. Now, this guy has some pretty crazy stuff going on. Players cannot play attachments. That's fine. While the Witch King is in the staging area, each character gets minus one, so we don't want him in the staging area. After the Witch King attacks, he returns to the staging area unless the defending player raises this threat by three. So this guy is actually 44 threat. So we're going to, this guy attacks at 40, so he's going to come down here. This guy is also going to come down here. And this guy is going to come down here. I'm then going to move both of these guys back over here. And that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, Took is awesome. Basically, all these cards, there's a whole set of cards I've never used because I always play solo. This is a, a card that has no, like this effect does not work in solo play. So I'm just starting to use him for the first time in this particular set of decks. And I think he's pretty awesome. You can see how we controlled the threat there and our questing power just by using the toques. Okay, <laughs> I had a sudden fear that they were unique. <laughs> okay, whatever. So, again, we have the same deal as before. We have one going straight into the discard path from the trap. We have this one going here. Then we have two 40s, but I think I'm going to give it to the Witch King first, and then that's another 40 as well. So 40 and 40 and discard. Okay. Let me think about how I want to do this. For starters, let's defend against this bloke. Each player has, uh, what is it, the bottom one? Defending player must discard one ally or he gets plus three. I'm going to leave that go through because he's only going to be attacking with four, which means he has one wound. And then I'm going to defend... I think I'm just going to tap you and heal that just in case. Oops, wrong button. Heal that just in case.
And then I'm going to tap him again to defend against this bloke. Boom. Players have crossed the Anduin. So this shadow effect has no effect. It says if players have not yet crossed. So we have crossed. So this actually does nothing now. He's attacking for three. We're defending at three. No damage. Okay, let me think. I can attack back for six, seven, eight, nine. I can attack for nine, which is basically three damage. Is it even worth trying to kill this guy? We have one thing here. So I can put six damage on him. So I put seven damage on him this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. That means I only need four more damage to kill him. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and kill him. So I'm going to tap this guy. That puts one damage on him. Flip. Nothing. This guy is killed. I then attack for six. I then gonna do one stand and fight. Pull out another eagle. And then I'm going to do six, six, six. Now he defends at six, but we're, that means he gets six more damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. He now has seven wounds. These guys are both discarded. Then I'm going to tap you and tap you. And I think I'm going to go one, two. And one. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, now we just need to run home as quickly as possible. Let's tap you and go one, two. Okay, so the first thing I want to do... Oh, wait, and this guy gets plus three, one, two, three threat because we left the Witch King engaged. So it's one, two, three, four. Bam. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to leave Shadow and Hasty Stroke and When Revealed Effect up with the last two points. And quest, quest, quest. Meanwhile, over here. I've got one, two, three, and another snare. And I'm going to go one and place out Hemimath. And then I'm going to go quest, quest, cool. Oh, wait, I didn't. Sorry, I forgot to attack with Prince and kill this guy. And then I'm going to go quest, 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 quest. Quest. Plus 13. Yep, okay, plus 13, so that is bam and you blam. Ooh, we have crossed the Anduin, so we now reveal the top three, a uh, top two card, top two scouts. So that is one, and the other scout is this guy. That, the bottom of this list is the top of the deck. So, like, bam, bam. Bam, see? Okay, 
So when you when you're searching the deck, this card here is the top of the the top of the deck. So if I flip the deck over, that's the top, and this one here is the bottom. And because it's upside down, the bottom of the deck is the top. Does that make any sense? Whatever. Okay, we're only plus six, which is horribly low, but I tap this bloke here. Now over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Over here we have one, two, three. So that's another one, two, three, four, five, six. We're now plus 12. So this one requires... Oh, we also have the tracker, don't we? So this gets a car. This gets a point. Oh, this gets a point. He only needs two to clear that. Remember, we have crossed the Anduins. This doesn't have plus three anymore. This is only one point to clear, so that is also cleared. Gives us a victory point. So we're actually plus 14. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It takes us to plus eight. This is cleared. This goes here. Uh, this one also has a thing from the scout. And I may as well discard and Yeah, I'll just leave it like that. So I discard and add one more point. And now we have quite a heavy attack. We're actually, let's see how this goes. We've got the Witch King we have to deal with. So, I'm gonna go optional engagement. He goes to the lowest threat. No, actually, let me think. This guy goes to the lowest threat. Uh, then I'm going to, this guy attacks at 40, so we're just gonna leave him up there. This guy's 35. We'll uh, optionally engage him and we'll have the dog go over here. Okay, so he gets a card. He's a 40 and he's a 40. So that's two cards straight into the discard pile. And then he gets a card and then he gets a card. Over here we have a card and discard pile. There are no more cards because that's reset, so if only I dealt to this dog first. That was pretty stupid. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Why did I forget to cut I didn't I forgot to actually put my cards out. I'm an idiot. I was supposed to cast two and put out this guy. Oh well, whatever. So you're gonna spend one and faint the Witch King. And then I'm going to spend one and stand and fight for another monster. Oh, that's pretty, that's going to be a pretty good ending. Then, uh, that guy's attacking for one, this guy's attacking for three. Yeah, so he's gonna defend once against the guy attacking for three. Nothing. You're gonna leave this one. Uh, yeah, leave this one undefended. He does one damage, we'll place it onto Bilbo, uh, you know, Frodo, whatever. Meanwhile, over here, I'll defend against this bloke. Discard a character, he gets plus three. So four plus three 
is actually enough to kill this guy. So luckily we've got plenty of discards. We'll discard Glowine. That cancels this effect. And that is one damage, which will clear. And then I'll tap you. I'll also clear a point off Frodo. Okay, and now this guy is the first attacker because he's first player. So I go three, I go six, which negates this guy's defense. And then three, that puts another three wounds on top of him. Takes him to 10 wounds. This is now discarded, which uh, untaps him. Okay, and then I go attack for three, four, five, and that kills him. And then I'm gonna tap you and draw one card over here. And now we're pretty much game over. We've gotten through this nice and smooth, which is unusual. Oh, look, finally my defense cards turn up. <laughs> I've got three of these in the deck. Okay, so. I'm just gonna go one, two, place out you. I may as well go one and place out plus one defense. One, two, three, four defense now. Meanwhile, over this side, oh, finally some card draw, which you don't need. We never got our uh, other two trackers. So I'm going to go one, two, place out this bloke, leave the other faint up, tap you for one, two. That guy is not going to go off. So let's go one, two, place out this card. That gives us plus one uh, will or whatever. And I'll leave... I'll leave all my cancels live. Oh, and I also need to go one, two, three because of uh, the Witch King. Okay, so let's go quest, 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 quest. West. That's plus eight. Reset sucker. You blammo and you blammo. This guy gets plus three because we have actually crossed the Anduin. One, two, three. Oops. It's actually uh, permanent because uh, we can't ever travel to that place now. because this is a West Bank location, we can't travel there. We're still plus two, so that is one, two. But we also have this guy, which we tap to add one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Bam. 16, we have now passed this stage we've won the game but I like to play things out see if I can see how smooth I can get the ending let's draw have this guy come down here and we'll leave this guy in the staging area oh, and this guy gets another point from the uh, tracker okay again so he is has one discarded and one goes here this guy has one, he has two discarded, he has one go here and one go here. Okay, this guy is attacking for three. 
So I'm going to go one defense. What do I need to kill this guy? I need five to kill. That's plenty. So I have one defense. Flip. Nothing. He's attacking for three, defending at four. I then go three, four, and a three, four, five. That kills him. I then defend again using Sentinel to block this guy. The defending player must discard an ally, which I can. He's attacking for three. That's defended. We're going to spend one to faint the Witch King. Actually, we're not going to do that. Beg your pardon. Sorry, I screwed that up. We're going to defend the Witch King with this guy. Oh, well, let's do this one first. So I'm just going to faint and stop this guy from attacking. I'm then going to <laughs> defend with this guy, which adds one more damage to the Witch King automatically which means our lowly spearman actually kills him. This is very rare to kill the Witch King with uh, this deck. Up, deck. Then I, uh, what do I need? I need four to kill here. So that's six kills him. Two kills him and he does nothing. And that's it, let's tap you, draw one card. And unfortunately, we don't have any more thing. Anyway, that's it. So, we made it through. That was a pretty smooth run. Hopefully, I didn't make too many mistakes. But, uh, yeah. Now, that run a bit smoother than normal. It, it can get pretty hectic, this quest. I actually did a, I tried to record a session of this a couple of days ago, and on turn one, I had like seven, you know, not seven, I had like one, two, three, I had five surges, all adding doom, so each extra card ended up having doom three on it, and it was just a, it was just a disaster. But I will see you guys next time. Oh, remember to, uh, let me know what you think these decks should be called. We've basically got a combat deck and a questing deck card draw. Okay.